thank you to my patrons and channel members for supporting this video. If you want to join them, links are in the description. Oh yeah. What's up guys? Erica here from Howie49RC. Today, we finally get to dive into milling our worm gear cradle here. I took it to work this week, sandblasted it again, mainly just to get off any excess slag, clean out some of the holes because there was some sand stuck in there from when I had cooled it. It's all nice and clean now. First thing that I need to do is put the mill back together because it is in freaking shambles right now. I need to slam it all back together, get the head trammed in, get the vise trammed in, and then uh, I think I have some pretty good ideas about how I'm going to clamp, oh, let's not drop this, how I'm gonna clamp this to machine it. Okay, so now that I got the mill all put back together, the head is trimmed, the vise is trimmed back in. The vise obviously is in a strange orientation, it's on its side, but we'll discuss that a little more later. But first, let's start discussing how we're gonna clean out that main hole on the cradle. So since I need a surface that is perfectly perpendicular to this hole, and coincidentally, we have a nicely flat machine surface on the bottom of the cradle, I think what I'm gonna do is plop a one, two, three block down, put the cradle on top of it, and then a clamping block atop that, probably with a piece of wood under it, maybe a little something like that. I figured it would be appropriate to use the very first thing that I ever made on the milling machine, this clamping block for this purpose. The cradle is held super, super securely. It's not gonna go anywhere. I'm not gonna be using any cutting fluid because cast iron, you're supposed to cut dry. Um, it has a lot of graphite in it, which acts as kind of a natural lubricant, so there's not really any need to use cutting fluid. My end mill slides down the hole absolutely gorgeously, no binding whatsoever. All right, here we go. done it and it did not break. That is fantastic news. Alrighty, so now what needs to happen is I now need to mill this slot nice and clean. And I need to get it set up so that this surface here is nice and perpendicular to the table. And also so that this flat surface down here is also perpendicular to the table. So I think what I'm gonna do is again, use my one, two, three block like that against the back of the vise here, which is my reference surface, just like this. So now I know that this surface is perfectly perpendicular to the table this way, which is great. But now I need to indicate in this surface so that it's parallel to the table. So I've got two options. I can either indicate along this top surface here, or I can indicate along the bottom side of this hole. I think I'm gonna try this top face first and see how that goes, but if I have too much trouble, I'm gonna go for the bottom side of the hole. So some fussing and finagling later, I think I've got it pretty much as good as I'm gonna get with such a small amount of surface to actually indicate on. 
But as you can see, on average, it's probably about within a thousandth, which is really good. Maybe maybe within two thou. Let's say within two thou, which is plenty good enough. And that surface actually has quite a lot of imperfections, so. I'm not surprised that we're getting such like erratic readings. I'm gonna be using a two flute corner radius end mill to match the corner radius on the inside of this tab here. And actually, is the cut deep enough? Cut is going to be deep enough, so that's great. Here we go, this is the big test of strength for this tab and for these welds. I'm gonna take it super slow, be careful, not get overly confident. So far, so good. I want to check the width because this gap here has to fit on part of the handle. And all right, that is still too tight. Let's keep going. Yep, that is absolutely perfect right there. All right, great. Now I'm just gonna bring it down to its full depth, which is another 50 thou, and we'll be done. Gorgeous, awesome, it survived, woo! And while I'm at it, I'm gonna clean up the bits of weld on this face here just a little bit. Figure I might as well, so I don't have to bother with grinding them. out of here, not break it out of here, you know what I mean. Guys, I have done it. The largest hurdle of this project is over. We successfully machined our welds. They look really solid. Some porosity here and there, but that's kind of to be expected. But, oh man, I am so relieved to have that part of the process over. I can't believe that this actually worked. I can't believe that I successfully decided, hey, I'm gonna try and weld cast iron and then machine it once I'm done. Hope it doesn't break. And I freaking went and did it. Yeah, that is so freaking cool. And I think I can be proud of myself for that. It's now time for me to reassemble the cradle with all of its components. I've got some grease. I've got some uh, Vactra 2 whey oil here to get the brass components all oiled up nicely and grease for the gear. I've also got a new grease line here along with the fittings for it. So I'm gonna get this slam back together and we'll go from there.
So the milling machine is all taken back apart, as you can see. I'm gonna temporarily put this back together just as a proof of concept for you guys. And then I'm going to pull it back apart and lube everything during a time lapse because I don't want my nice camera around all the oil and grease that is going to need to be used when I finally assemble it. Let's get the engagement lever thingy in place. Oh, this is gonna be tricky. Oh, no. Hey, 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 there it is. And I got it upside down. Good job, Erica, good job. Which is there. That's it, there we go. Now we got the engagement lever properly installed. Put a screw in just for temporary to hold it. What do you know, guys? Look at that. It works. Yeah, all right. We have officially fixed the milling machine. This is absolutely awesome. For those curious about what caused the ear on the cradle to actually break in the first place, watch the cradle as I bring the quill all the way back up. You see how it presses on it? Or it's really hard to see, but it does in fact move the cradle upwards just a little bit. It's putting the slightest amount of pressure on it, and there's actually an imprint on the bottom side of the cradle, you can probably see it in some shots, of a screw from the top of the quill on it. And thus, I think that's why it broke. Somebody really, really forcefully jammed the quill handle back up and snapped the tab off. That is what I think really caused it. So to keep the quill from running into the cradle, I'm going to put a spacer on top of this little piece here, which is part of the quill stop system. So by just putting a little spacer there, it won't come back up all the way, as you can see just there. I also fixed the quill skirts while I was at it in here, and those work great now. So with our warm gear cradle functioning just wonderfully now, I'm gonna jump you guys into a time lapse, get this all put back together, cause lots of grease, lots of oil. Don't want that around my nice camera, so. I'll meet you guys back here in a few minutes for a final test. The milling machine is back together, and you know what's even better than that? It works! Yeah! All right, check it out. So I put the feed worm in, and then, uh, let's see, I turn the machine on, and then I set this, push this in, and it goes down! Oh my god, I'm sorry! Look at that! Yes, 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 yes! Is that not the coolest freaking thing ever? Yeah! <laughs> and guess what? 
take those up too. Yeah. And when it gets all the way to the bottom, disengages itself and sends the quill back up. That's so cool. This is so cool. I want to see it click up again. I want to see it because it's cool. <laughs> God, that's so cool. So I can start it with this lever here. I can also disengage it with that lever there also, or it'll do it with the quill stop, like that. Guys, this thing is so freaking cool. I am amazed that I put it all back together and it works. And it works. I know that the original problem was not that the auto feed didn't work. The original problem was that we couldn't put a tool in and out of the quill. Which we can now do. But come on, this is still just so freaking cool. I'm like a little kid in a candy store. My gosh, I am so thrilled this series turned into a lot more than I thought it was going to. It started off as, okay, why does the quill not go up and down as it should? And then it turned into, okay, we've got a broken cast iron part of the auto down feed system. That turned into, okay, let's try and weld this piece of cast iron together and then machine it when we're done and put it back in and hope the whole damn thing works. And sure enough, it does. And that is very, very awesome. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. I hope you guys learned a lot because I learned a ton doing this project. I love working on heavy equipment like this. It just gets me excited. I love gears and all the, you know, all the shafts and the pins and the gears and the nuts and the bolts and the, all this stuff. It's just, it's so much fun. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. Please do leave a big fat thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and hit that subscribe button too if you're new here. Thank you to my patrons and channel members for making this series possible. If you want to join them, links are in the description down below. If you're looking for friends in the RC hobby, come check out my Discord server. And my Instagram is highway49 underscore RC. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. The series took so long to make. It's absolutely unreal. Weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm done now. And it's time for celebratory biscuits. Let's go.